I just thought, okay, I will start with a small intro introduction. Then we will discuss about what is health and what is disease. Then we will go to COVID. And then finally, we'll... before we start, let me start with a simple disclaimer. I am usually used to take classes for a, a medical college students. Okay. So in our setup, we are very, we usually talk to the point. So my language will be like that only. I am not usually used to this corporate uh, language of politically correctness or expressing uh, an unpleasant thing in a very pleasant way. Such language, I am not usually used to it. So sometimes if you find any command or any word very, uh, what do you say, maybe rude or brusque, please don't take it in a wrong sense. That is the style which we have been grown up for the past uh, 25 years in medical colleges. Right. So we'll start with an introduction. So before going, discussing about the pandemic per se, I would like you to learn two concepts in psychology. One is called the Kubler-Ross grief cycle and another is called the Dunning-Kruger effect. I would uh, request all of you to give your maximum attention for these two phenomena because Understanding these two things will enable you to deal with everything in your career or your family relationship, everything. If you understand these two concepts, it will go a long way in, uh, understand, in realizing why people react like this and also how to get over things. So first we'll start with something called as Kubler-Ross grief cycle. And this is it. Basically, this was designed, uh, uh, this was not, I can't say designed, this was mentioned by Kubler-Ross some decades ago uh, as to how a human being reacts or when he or she hears an unpleasant news. Assume that there is a student who has just failed in the exam and as soon as he sees the result, for some time he will be in shock. Okay, that is called as a phase of immobilization. Then suddenly he, there will be a denial. No, no, this is not so. This cannot be. Uh, they have not published the result properly. I will check in the another paper. I will say uh, the website is wrong. Such things are called a denial. Then he will get angry. Uh, angry against everyone. And then there will be a bargaining. Okay, how many subjects I have failed? Only one or two and then there will be a depression, then there will be testing, then there will be acceptance, okay? The same cycle someone also undergoes when there is an illness in the family or in corporate style, suppose you are expecting a promotion and you don't get a promotion, these are the phases you will be going through. And the problem is some people take a wrong decision when they are in this anger phase. And why I am uh, saying this now is you are, uh, the, everyone reacts to the pandemic in the same way. Some are uh, still in shock, some are in denial. What is the denial is what we say. We say that this is, there is no virus at all. This is 5G, this is China, this is the corporate problem. All such things, they all come in the denial phase. Then comes the anger phase. People get angry. You see someone without a mask, they will get angry. You see that the government has not done something, you get angry. Then you come to the bargaining phase. You assume that, uh, okay, this is a bad virus, but somewhat I will escape. And suddenly after some, some, suppose if someone gets it, they go to depression, then testing, finally acceptance. So the why people react differently to the same disease is because some people are in the uh, shock phase, some people are in denial, some people are in anger, some people in bargaining, some people in depression, some people testing, and some people acceptance. That, uh, the, uh, that is why some people refuse to go for vaccination, some people refuse to take a proper treatment, and so on. This is the first phenomenon you want to be clear with it. Is it clear? Can we proceed? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. Next, next is something called as Dunning-Kruger effect. This is uh, very simple. In this, in the x-axis is your competence. That is, uh, you know nothing about something 
and then your competence increases and finally you become a big uh, expert in that same way the the y axis you have confidence so what happens is as soon as you start learning something the confidence uh, increases very 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 rapidly that is even with little knowledge someone has a very high confidence level this is called as peak of mount stupidity then what happens after some time there is some unpleasant thing and then this confidence level goes down and down and down and they enter what is called as valley of despair and after that when they have developed more competence there is a gradual increase in the confidence level this is what happens for example you uh, you want you to start learning your bicycle initially your uh, confidence will be low once you start riding it your confidence will be very very high then you will try some silly trick like riding in one hand or without uh, holding the hands then fall down get a bruise and then the confidence level comes down and then it slowly increases so why we uh, what happens uh, how is this phenomenon related to covid is because people just read one or two pages in a paper they read one or two news articles read few whatsapp uh, uh, forwards and then they assume that they know everything about covid and then they, based on their little knowledge and supreme confidence they take wrong decisions okay this is the same dunning kruger effect in the tamil okay this we'll skip so this is the introduction next we will discuss something about health and disease so who defines health as a state of complete physical mental and social well being and not merely an absence of disease or infirmity okay and also an ability to lead a socially and economically productive life and this health is a fundamental right it's an integral part of development and it's a worldwide social goal it's intersectoral and a essence of productive life by intersectoral what we mean is health cannot be achieved only by the health department alone so health is not something which is limited inside the hospitals there is a something called as community health and also other departments are also needed for health we need the education department today we see that industries department is over active in supplying oxygen railways are helping in shifting drugs and so on so health is not related to hospital alone and it is not limited to health department alone and there are various dimensions of health a physical dimension a mental dimension social dimension spiritual dimension emotional dimension and occasional dimension and all these dimensions have been affected in this pandemic and who is responsible for your health you are responsible for your health your community is responsible for your health your nation is responsible for your health and there is also an international responsibility that is why when suddenly when we had a crisis other nations are giving us uh, drugs and uh, other needs and earlier we are sending vaccines to good and we have got some uh, vague definitions but now let me tell you suppose you see the, the this is a small map of a small town some uh, someone came to the town first uh, uh, a new person came here and he asked the person there where is the post office you see here you see the post office so the bystander said sir it is next to the police station so this gentleman asked okay where is the police station the bystander said sir it is next to the post office so he got really confused and he then he asked okay tell me where are the police station and post office in your town the bystander till said sir they are nearby okay so actually this is a joke but when you see the definition of health we define health as absence of disease and disease as absence of health do you, uh, there is a reason why there is a confusion here is because the health and disease are not something which you can define it as black and white that is there is one uh, health which is white and one health which is black it is actually a spectrum uh, health there can be a positive health a better health a freedom from sickness and unrecognized sickness a mild sickness a severe sickness and finally death so this difference between the health and death 
it's actually a continuous spectrum you see it is not just black and white there are various shades of gray and in fact it is a continuous spectrum so unfortunately many people don't realize that it's a continuous spectrum for example your covid status can be either uh, totally free from covid or the on this uh, year, the end a severe disease or it can be anywhere between but unfortunately people expect either covid positive or covid negative covid positive or covid negative and it is in this confusion uh, that the, we have all the complications going on people want one drug to totally cure it they want uh, and if it doesn't cure else they call, call it as waste or they want one test they want one test unfortunately this disease doesn't fit into any of these frames any doubt in what we have discussed so far if anyone has a doubt you can ask we will clarify the doubt and then we will proceed no questions so far no questions okay now you uh, we will go to something about we will uh, know about the diseases there are few diseases which are called infectious diseases that is this diseases are caused by bacteria virus fungus etc for example malaria tuberculosis dengue or whatever you call uh, say then there is something called as cholera typhoid smallpox chickenpox all these are infectious diseases then we have something called as non infectious diseases which are caused by factors other than uh, germs for example diabetes hypertension and there is a set of diseases which are uh, which are combination of both infectious and non infectious uh, and covid is one disease which has both an infectious component as well as a non infectious component and many people miss that here the problem is the non infectious component is often the one that kills a person but many people really miss it and hence they are confused and they get lost so as we said sometimes in few diseases the infectious agent kills the person in few diseases the immunity kills the person and few diseases the damage is by both and in covid you have damage by both your the virus as well as the immunity and infection usually means there is a multiplication of the germ and infectious disease means that the process of disease has caused why this is important is when we do a throat swab the you are knowing only the presence of an infection we really don't know whether the infectious process has started or not and the second point is if the throat swab is negative that means that the infection has stopped it does not mean that the infectious disease has stopped so these are the two things you need to be really clear a throat swab says an infection and not about the infectious disease and primary infection is something you get first time reinfection is something you get the next time and focal infection is something which is localized to one part systemic infection is something which is all over the body covid can be either focal or systemic or generalized and there is something called a subclinical infection what happens here is the virus or bacteria comes affects you but the person really doesn't know that he is infected in case of covid the virus would have reached everyone else but only few will develop symptoms the others would have had subclinical infection and there is something called a typical infection which follows a common course but in few individuals based on their genetic makeup the virus may do something else this is called a typical infection so as we said covid can be either focalized or generalized it can be clinical or subclinical it can be typical or atypical in a typical infection the lungs are affected in a atypical disease brain is affected a heart can be affected any other organ can be affected and then the damage also can be due to the virus or it can be due to the immune system the second point is much more important because most of the damage in this disease occurs due to the immune system and not the virus 
so now you will see why this uh, disease has been a big problem first is this is a new virus and has unique features but many people assume that they know all about it that is the what we saw in the dunga dunning kruger effect people assume that uh, they read some uh, two or three articles then they think that this is like hiv some team people thought that this is like tetanus some people thought that this is like ebola some people thought that this is like diabetes but unfortunately this is like nothing else so this is not like an hiv because the viral load is important in this disease in hiv whether you are infected with one drop of blood or with one liter of blood the disease will be same but here if the infective dose is less then the disease manifestation will be less and this is not tetanus because here the vaccines don't give you 100% protection and this is not ebola because you cannot contain this everyone will get the virus eventually and this is not diabetes or hypertension where you can delay the treatment here you need immediate treatment and whenever you talk about any infection there are four different features first is something called as communicability by communicability we refer to the ability of the virus to infect one person from another person then there is something called as infectivity by this term what we mean is the virus has reached an individual but it is able to go inside and cause disease second comes the concept of pathogenesis and virulence in which the virus is able to cause a disease process so as far as covid is concerned the virus has increased communicability increased infectivity increased virulence and increased pathogenesis any doubt still now can we proceed or any doubt you can ask uh, doctor what do you mean our in, our immunity causes damage yeah so basically what happens is uh, our immunity is like a uh, the invading bacteria is like a other country army and immunity is like our army or our police okay so, so most of the time this immunity for most of the individuals in most of the time this immunity works properly that is it goes and kills only the virus but sometimes the immunity gets uh, is deranged and the immunity also damages our own body's tissue in addition to killing the bacteria or virus so in any disease process many disease process the damage will be due to the immunity also so this we uh, in some disease process predominant damage will be by the virus so uh, suppose say i will give, tell you three countries for example take uh, example of country 1 an enemy country has uh, attacked here what has happened is the enemy soldier country has bombed uh, bombed and destroyed this country's property that is damaged by virus in, in country 2 what happens is the enemy attack but their damage is less in retaliation this uh, country's army did maximum damage during the war for example uh, sometimes we uh, we erroneously shoot down our own planes something happens or take uh, case uh, some the, for example uh, you take suppose there is a riot in the road some uh, if the police person is very capable he will hit only the rioters but an inexperienced police person will take his lucky and blindly uh, hit anyone who comes in the uh, in the road okay same way sometimes the immune system damages the body more than the virus okay got it okay, okay. so now to understand the way how this covid attacks you let us forget this virus for some time and we will see so here it is an old fort and some hundred soldiers are guarding the fort now we will see what happens when an enemy comes and attacks this fort suppose there is a scenario the uh, the you have got 100 soldiers who are guarding the fort but the enemy has 10 soldiers only what will happen answers please soldiers will be able to save the fort yeah they'll kill the enemy okay so the enemy has 100 soldiers we have uh, 10 soldiers we have 100 soldiers our 100 soldiers will kill them in no time and after this what will happen is 
they will seize the enemy's weapons their map their attacking methods and be prepared for the next attack clear any doubt no no doubt no, no. can we move to the next scenario yes 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 yeah now here the enemy has thousand soldiers what will happen our army is gone our soldiers so the 100 soldiers will be killed by the 1000 soldiers and the fort will be captured by the enemy any doubt no 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 okay now come to the third point this time the enemy comes with 100 soldiers but the, the weapons how their plans everything is already known to our 100 the enemy comes with 1000 soldiers but their the entire details are known to our soldiers and our soldiers have superior weapons what will happen our our soldiers can attack better our soldiers can uh, because we have got go, uh, increased weapons and all the maps and everything even if there is a 100 1000 so, uh, soldiers coming our 100 soldiers can still win now the enemy has 100 soldiers b also has 100 soldiers what will happen uh, it will depend on our combat strength or like our uh, strategy uh, there, there will be a siege and there will be no result and uh, it will be prolonging for a longer time without going this way or that way now the, now, now we are coming to scenario 5 the yeah, there are 200 enemy soldiers what will happen the 200 soldiers will kill the 100 soldiers but in that process they also will be getting killed and uh, when they will come uh, they will capture the fort wall and will come to the next uh, round and the war will happen in the next circle instead of the outer circle do you understand this concept we have got 100 people uh, safeguarding our fort and we have got another 100 people safeguarding the next circle now if the enemy has uh, uh, the first circle is defeated the war will happen in the next circle anyone has doubts over this concept no doubt i think you can no doubt yeah now we will uh, relate these concepts with covid if the incoming viral load is less your immune system will kill the virus if the incoming viral load is very very high the virus will kill the immune system and the body will suffer suppose you have vaccinated yourself then even if the viral load is high your body will be able to fight the virus suppose your uh, the uh, uh, body's immune system and virus are equally uh, equally post and there is a fight happening but it is very equal what will happen if another 100 soldiers come the enemy will become strengthened so what happens is suppose you are already got an exposure yesterday but the viral load is very less and your immune system is actively trying to defend you you go out today you without mask get another viral load the virus will win over so this is exactly why the government is been advising mask and other social distancing because we want to keep the viral load to the minimum suppose the viral load is bit high what will happen is if the battle will will be happening in the lungs instead of the nose so what happens is wherever the battle happens that area is destroyed that is a strong battle happens but now if the uh, if you have got a very good immunity the virus is stopped at your nose itself so the battle ground is the nose wherever there is a battle that area gets destroyed so what happens when your nose is destroyed that is the inner aspect of your nose gets destroyed what will you lose sense of smell exactly so when you lose your sense of smell it means that there has been a fierce battle between your body and the virus in the inner aspect of your nose suppose 
uh, if the virus is still high, it will uh, um, bypass that stage and then the next battle will happen in the lungs. It is at this stage when there is a battle in the lungs, you get the pneumonia and you get low oxygen. Okay. Now, if the virus is defeated in the lungs, well and good. But sometimes what happens is the virus, uh, if the immunity is low or if the viral load is high, the virus then goes inside the blood and causes clots in various places. So when it causes clot in the blood vessel in the heart, the person gets heart attack. When the clot is in the blood vessel in the brain, the person gets a stroke. And depending upon the area of clot, the particular organ is affected. So basically, you can understand in a way that if there, are, if you have got a good immunity and if the viral load is low, the fight happens in the nose. If the virus is still high, the fight happens in the lungs. And if the virus is still high, the fight happens in the blood. And if as long as it is limited to the nose, there is no threat to the life. But when the it comes to lungs and when there is a low oxygen, uh, you have to supplement oxygen, otherwise there's a danger to life. And when it comes to blood, again, the danger is very much increased because the you know, complications are huge. And then finally, you have something called a cytokine storm in which there are complications are even more higher. So the moral of the story is the, just like how in a war, if you allow the enemy to penetrate inner, the damage will be very high. You have to fight the war at the border itself. Same way, here also we need to fight the war at the border itself. And as I said, when we are fighting the war, if we are adding more and more virus, for example, suppose you are having an asymptomatic illness, and if you go and get exposed, you may have a sore throat. Suppose you are having a sore throat, you go and get exposed, you will have a pneumonia. So this is uh, this can be uh, uh, understood by a simple mathematics. The more the viral load, the more severe disease you get. And when will you get the more viral load? When you meet more people, you get more viral load. If you don't wear mask, you get more viral load. That's all. As simple as that. Suppose assume that there is a we will come back to your fort. And assume that there is a battle going on in the fort, that there is 100 enemy, your soldiers are also 100, both are fighting fiercely. Now that you have got a uh, helicopter from a friendly nation who comes and kills the enemies, then uh, you will win, isn't it? That helicopter is the brushing and gargling. So every day, uh, assume that you have got some virus and your immune system is fighting in your throat and nose, then you brush and gargle and do a mouthwash you are helping your immune system by killing the virus. Okay, clear? Yeah, yeah. doctor is something similar to hand wash, but we have not seen this being uh, advi been advised at many places. Yes, like I, don't know. I really yeah. don't know. Actually, this must have been advised first because this virus mostly enters through the nose and mouth. Hand uh, gargling, brushing and mouthwash are more important than hand wash. Hand wash is important, but this is more important. Now, suppose what happens when you inhale steam? Okay, that was, I was about to ask later. <laughs> okay, well, what is the temperature of steam? About 100. Okay, so when you inhale a, a steam which is above 100, this will go and in, in, inside it will go and uh, condense in your ins uh, inside uh, mucous membrane of your sc skin and throat. Suppose you have uh, put a, you, uh, you keep a metal rod which is, uh, in a fire which is more than 100 degrees centigrade and keep it in your skin, what will happen? It will be burned. Yeah, that will be burned. What happens when the skin is burned? Will it be easy for the bacteria and virus to enter as a burnt skin or a normal skin? Burnt skin? Well, there is no doubt about it. Virus will enter a burnt skin very easily. So what will happen when you are burning your inner, inner membrane of your throat and nose? 
will the virus enter easily or will it be tough for the virus to enter it should be easy for the virus to enter no? that's that is exactly why we should not do this steam inhalation because by steam inhalation you are not destroying the virus you are destroying the your body's outer wall okay steam now i said a friendly helicopter which comes and kills the enemy soldiers that is the garg uh, mouthwash and brushing the what is steam is not a friendly helicopter it is a helicopter which is coming and kill, uh, damaging your wall fort what will happen when the fort is damaged the enemy will easily come in so the difference between a uh, mouthwash and gargling and brushing is brushing kills the enemy uh, soldiers whereas steam kills your fort wall okay that is the inner membrane of your throat and uh, nose thereby making a large number of virus enter your throat and blood stream so don't do that this we have explained okay any doubt regarding what we have discussed uh, till now uh, uh, gargling oh. okay. sorry yeah uh gargling you suggest using a solution like betadine or just the warm water gargle with salt it can be best used by salt solution you gargle for one or two or three times a day you do mouthwash and another two or three times a day gargling can also be used uh, you can also use betadine you can use mouthwash or you can use uh, the common uh, salt uh, just to dissolve salt in water and you gargle with that warm water with salt warm water warm water okay 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 now in this image just to discuss uh, basically what happens is when a bacteria or virus comes out there are so many processes involved by which your white blood cells go and destroy that virus this uh, this p selecting e selecting protein icon all this you don't worry about it but and this is just to tell that this virus versus immunity war which is happening in our body is not a simple one it depends on a cascade of reactions some 50 to 60 elem chemicals are involved uh, see for at each stage of this bacteria our white blood cells killing that virus various chemicals are involved now why this is important is if you have got a genetic problem in any one of the steps then you have got a impaired uh, immunity this impaired immunity may not be apparent in usual times but sometimes in a case of covid this will be an issue that is why you see that in the same home five people will be infected one will have a severe illness and other will not be having anything or sometimes in one family in apartment one family will be having a very severe illness others won't be getting an illness it all depends upon the individual's genetics also so here what you see is when a virus comes first there is an attack then finally there is a repair okay so initially there is an uh, this uh, our immune system goes and attacks this virus then after it uh, the virus is killed this attack has to stop only if this attack stops the repair process can start if the, uh, the immune system is still active the repair will never stop for example you got a enemy attacking you your nation your army has gone and fought the war and after the enemy has been defeated the army has to stop uh, shooting if the army continues to shoot at indiscriminately then the uh, people will be affected same way for some people what happens is even after the bacteria is killed this immune system goes on being hyperactive and damages the tissues and coming to this immunity we have come in something called as innate immunity or native immunity and something called as acquired immunity or adaptive immunity innate immunity is what you commonly have acquired immunity is the specific immunity against that specific virus, virus or bacteria this innate immunity is a general immunity against anything for example if you take 
you can uh, consider this, this innate immunity as your watchman the watchman in your office can handle two or three people and only if they are not armed assume you 100 people come or say even 20 people come your watchman uh, your watchman is the i am talking about the retired 60 plus people whom you employ uh, uh, as watchman suppose you uh, Uh, suppose uh, they will be able to deal only with two or three people who are uh, unarmed suppose 10 people come and make an issue this watchman will be helpless for that we have some other next category of people who are called as bouncers you know so next uh, sometimes if the low uh, number people who come in are more or if they have weapons we may have, even bouncers may be inadequate we may have to have uh, some trained uh, uh, protection people same way any illness first this innate immunity attacks uh, for most of the bacteria and virus this innate immunity is enough but sometimes for some viruses you need this adaptive immunity why this point is being stressed is because many people wrongly assume that you are immune to covid no you are not immune to covid you get immunity to covid either if you are infected or if you get vaccine and this innate immunity uh, you still have an innate immunity but that innate immunity is not enough against covid this innate immunity may save you from many diseases but when the viral load is high it may not save you this may save you when the viral load is low if two or three people comes your watchman can prevent him if 10 people come your watchman is helpless your innate immunity is like that and this innate immunity is dependent on age hormones and nutrition and also the various factors involved this in immunity is epithelial surfaces this is the inner lining of your throat and nose this is what is going to get destroyed when you are going to inhale steam and by inhaling steam you are actually reducing your immunity the next point what you want to know what you have to know is as soon as a bacteria or virus enters the immune reaction does not stop start immediately there is something called as lag phase okay so this i can tell you this you can also relate to your uh, uh, office for example as soon as your office uh, starts i mean a, a new startup starts immediately you won't come up with your product there will be a lag phase when we are preparing then you will release one product two product three products and then the sales will go on then there will be a plateau same way whenever a virus or bacteria attacks there is something called as lag phase then this immune uh, it uh, increases and when it comes here the bacteria has been destroyed and after the bacteria or virus has been destroyed the immunity has to come down this is a normal response which happens but for example some people's immune system is very bad what happens is either it starts very late or it starts very uh, very late and it doesn't go uh, for a, uh, the normal height some people it goes very high some people it goes like this so each and every person if they have got a problem in their immune system the response will be very uh, different and also the next point is for some people it starts properly and goes properly but instead of stopping it goes on like this and goes on increasing when it happens like this then the immune system does not stop where it has to stop the damage due to immunity is more many complications in covid are due to the immunity which doesn't stop at the right time so how can we uh, control this uh, doctor so i mean like uh, how will we get to know like how is our immune system so uh, basically you just find out uh, suppose you get an invest suppose you are exposed to covid you really don't even know that you have been exposed to covid you have got a perfect immune system okay that okay. we will get to know when we get tested right otherwise we will not even be aware that you know the person has got it and it is already been you know cured also so oh, by testing you are only checking the virus in the throat you are only checking the infection by testing you are not checking the disease by testing 
Uh, doctor, I think the question is basically, I think it, just everybody wants to you know, know like how is my immune system out of 100, mine is 80 or 70, 60. <clears throat> so is it a way to test that and understand? What is my immune system? So far, if you have, if you have not got a COVID, I mean, if we are all in Bangalore, and if you have not got a COVID, a major problem with COVID, then assume that your immune system is pretty good. Okay, is that the only way? That's the way to understand. No, no. I, actually, you can. There are many different ways, but the, that are really not needed. Yeah. Okay, you don't need to. You know, there are costly tests. Okay, for each component of the immune system, you can test. I told you. I showed yeah. you. Yeah. Uh, uh, Cialix, modified glycoprotein, integrin, high affinity, P selectin, E selectin, proteoglycan, ICAM, chemokines, uh, TNLF, IL1, every, everything you can check, but that is not really practically needed. What Dr. Is, Bruno, you just put a smile on my face. Yeah. Just saying that if all of us in Bangalore have not been touched by the virus and still huh? saying good and our immunity is good, it just brought so much of happiness on my face and you know uh thank don't, you for that our immune system please is take the vaccines and please don't remove your mask till next april absolutely with you on that doctor thank you so much yes just on a lighter note please come to this is a viral load uh, which is a viral load dependent illness yeah however good your immune system is if you are exposing it to more viral load you will get the disease it's like someone banging their head, thinking the head is too strong, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, to come back to the test, I think uh, what uh, the answer is, uh, it's a, there are very costly tests and it is not that practically possible. Uh, to uh, uh, yeah, well, but whatever is needed for us, uh, practically, we will discuss it in the subsequent slides. Okay, time is... Okay, we'll rush through. So, so uh, and what happens is, so after, uh, there is a first time there is an infection. If the next infection happens in uh, even before the first infection is over, the response will be very high, very high, and so on. Now we'll come to this. This is the most important point. For most, uh, assume the uh, consider three different types of cars. One car has a good uh, engine and a good brake. What happens? The, when you press the accelerator, it will uh, go to a good speed. And when you press the brake, it will stop. Now, there is one car where the engine is not uh, that much good. So, however you press the accelerator, it will go blah, 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 blah. But Then there is another car which has a good engine but no brake. So, it will uh, go rapidly, but you can't stop it. If you remember this uh, uh, 20 years ago, the Tata Sumo, that is what a deranged immune system works like. You click the brake and it just turns upside down. And this immune deficiency can be either primary or secondary. Okay, we'll rest. Now I told you this, that is a immune system without a brake. This can happen in a, there are many types for this. And one of this type is called type three. And this is what is happening in most cases of uh, COVID, that is people get clots inside their blood vessel because of a hypersensitive immune system. This cytolytic and cytotoxic also can happen and this is what they call it as cytokine storm. So basically the complications of COVID happen if the viral load is very high or if your immune system is not good. Since we cannot control our immune system, we control our viral load by wearing mask and regular brushing gargling. Okay, now we'll just summarize what we have learned till now. So the first point is called communicability. What it means is the ability of the virus to spread from one person to another. Can you avoid a communicability? No, but you can prevent it as far as possible. Okay, this as far as possible is important by social distancing, mask, hand wash. And we are testing this communicability with the throat swab. So unfortunately, you, 
when you check say positive 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 you are checking only this phase not the actual disease process and how we you contain it is by lockdown travel restrictions containment zone the next point is infectivity by infectivity the virus enters into our body and causes disease here how we are trying to prevent the infection is by brushing gargling and mouthwash and can whether can you detect this infectivity yes there are genetic studies we really don't do that so the virus can come to your nose then throat multiply come to lungs and come to blood what happens next now what you usually happens is when the person is having a deficient immune system what happens is the virus comes multiplies rapidly and the person dies this is what we uh, see as here he was fine for 3 days on the third day itself he suddenly died such news is what we hear is because of a immunodeficiency when the person is having a normal immune system the virus multiplies slowly the body fights back the virus is killed and this immune system reduces its action and healing starts suppose if this does not reduce the action then the disease proceeds into further complications so if your immunity is very bad the virus multiplies rapidly and there is death for a normal person the virus multiplies slowly but the body kills the virus and after the virus is killed the body's immune system shuts down and there is healing if the immune system doesn't shut down you get problem and you get various problems for example our problem can be due to the virus or due to immunity okay if uh, to how can we prevent a damage by virus is by taking vaccines and also you can take this zinc vitamins antioxidants the following drugs are against the vi uh, virus the various treatments what we have seen is against virus azithromycin doxycycline ivermectin remdesivir flavipro all these things are against the virus sometimes the virus is killed but the immune system is still on a overdrive then we need to take the drugs like steroids or toxilizumab in fact you can avoid this damage by immune system by avoiding some unscientific immune boosters remember that if you are taking this unscientific immune boosters and if your immune system is not good you are actually complicating the disease the many people who have taken this unscientific immune boosters have got complex disease because this is a disease where the problem is with the immune system now we will see what how the virus affects various organs and what happens so if the damage is in lungs what is the normal function of a lung the lung actually gets the oxygen from the air and sends it into blood when the lung is damaged there is low oxygen in the blood and because of this low oxygen the organ suffers now how do you measure it you measure it by pulse oximeter or if you want you can do a ct lungs and how do you treat it by prone position the by uh, what is in blue i meant things that you can do by yourself and what is in green is things which is done in hospital you see this is a social distancing hand wash all these things you do this is done in the hospital same way vaccines is your responsibility vitamin zinc antioxidants is your responsibility if this you can check it from your home and this prone position can be done in home all those in greens are done in by the hospital so basically what you need to uh, understand is if the damage is due to virus you have got different treatment if the damage is due to immunity you have got different treatment if the damage is due to lungs you have got a different treatment if the damage is in blood we have got different treatment and different test if the damage is in the uh, other organs you have got different test and different treatment so basically you are bombarded with lots and lots of treatment options and lots and lots of tests but no one probably explained to you why each test is needed now what you need to know is suppose you are checking in this uh, you are checking uh, ct lungs 
you have done us you have done you have checked your pulse oximeter the oxygen is right you have done your ct the ct is normal does it mean that you are safe no the problem can still happen in your blood so you have to do these tests so suppose if these two are normal the problem can help also happen elsewhere so again we need to do the test but please don't uh, uh, unfortunately this is no this is a very complex disease where the, you don't have a very simple solution for example if it is diabetes for a you if you say okay blood sugar more than 150 you be clear i can tell you one uh, simple criteria in case of other diseases here unfortunately based on your previous illness and previous issues we don't have a single way to diagnose it nor we don't have a single treatment this may be needed for some some may need this some may need this some may need this so unfortunately because of the complex nature of this disease there is no single test to diagnose or there is no single treatment there is a multitude of treatment so what is very common here is well please take vaccines you can take the zinc and antioxidants you can uh, be in prone position if you like keep maintain social distancing mask brush uh, gargle mouth wash so do this do this do this do this do this check this so these are things which everyone can do there are things which are marked in green may not be applicable to everyone so you don't get confused with all those things you just remember social distancing mask hand washing brushing gargling mouth wash and check with pulse oximeter and if you want to take vitamins and antioxidants and don't forget your vaccine so as i told in a deranged immune system the body cells are damaged the immune complexes are deposited and cytokine storm happens suppose what happens is assume that you have got a good immunity and the viral load is less and you are vaccinated the immune system successfully fights the virus and you are asymptomatic but at the same time if the viral load is very high you may get a problem now if you are unvaccinated you will get this problem you will get sore throat suppose if you have got a bad immune system what happens is there will be a, a viral multiplication and there will be a fighting suppose if you are not vaccinated the oxygen saturation will drop and there will be a cytokine storm so the problem is where it depends on many factors first is the viral load second is a vaccine status if you are not vaccinated and if the viral load is high it is certain death and even if you are uh, uh, even if you have a good uh, immunity there will be a cytokine storm and you need to uh, treat aggressively in icu so basically you remember if you are um, uh, basically you remember the various stages okay so this is no vaccine this is vaccine so if you are vaccinated then similarly this is less viral load this is more load so what is my point is your vaccine always shifts you from here to above when you vaccinate it converts a, suppose you have got a suppose you have got a heavy viral load uh, 
in if you are unvaccinated you will have a severe sickness if you are vaccinated you will have a unrecognized sickness yeah. for some persons with good immunity a vaccine will shift the spectrum from below to up and so reducing viral load gives to positive health vaccine gives to positive health so the what the take home message is you cannot control your genetical how your immune system works if it is well and good you are very happy but if it is not uh, if you have got a problem you can still save yourself by reducing your viral load by vaccinating yourself and by prompt treatment because these three factors a prompt treatment a reduction in viral load and vaccines will definitely move your spectrum of health to the healthy zone